Okay, great. Hello. Good evening. I guess we are ready to go now. Thank you so very much. <laughs> Can't read, you know. Just me, you, just, just me, you, and Mo. The, no, that's okay. We'll um, have some viewers on Facebook and on Instagram shortly. Okay. So just give me, let me just set up the Instagram live, actually, and you can go right into your discussion. Okay. Thank you very much for your patience. Oh. Yeah, it's no, it's no problem. Okay, let's go. You ready to okay. go? Yes. So good evening, everyone. Thank you so very much for joining us for this week's Transformation Thursday. And tonight's discussion should be very exciting. We are discussing the divine masculine. What is the divine masculine? And our speaker for this evening is Philadelphia resident and radio host, Mr. Terrence Strength. So let's get right into it. It's all yours. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Abina. Thank you for having me on this evening on Transformation Thursday. As she was saying, uh, I'm the host of uh, the WBN Network, uh, the Know Your Right Show, Spirituality, A New Perspective with Tara Strunt. And on that podcast, we talk about all things metaphysical. So I want to thank Abina and I want to thank the audience that's out there uh, for giving me a time to share my perspective on this topic. So the, the title, I normally like to start off with a poem, and I think I am going to start off with a poem that I read on my last show. Uh, the title of this poem is called, well, it's not a poem, actually, it's just a saying, it's just a little paragraph. Uh, the title of it is Soul. Your soul is requiring you to heal deeper, to elevate past the hurt, to transcend beyond what happened, to let go of what and who no longer serves you, to protect your energy daily, to get the lesson, to master your thoughts and emotions, to forgive yourself, to love yourself unconditionally, and to honor your body temple, all in order to thrive and vibrate higher daily. And that was by Lala Delia. So I like that. I thought that was, I thought that fit for what we're going to talk about this evening with the, the topic being the divine, what is the divine masculine? So let's talk about that. You know, there's a lot going on out here on a couple of my shows. We've, we've had shows on the Manosphere, online dating, uh, you know, people getting friend zoned and all these types of things. Uh, that's going on in the relationship world. And, you know, I'm always having discussions about this stuff with my friends. You know, they're on online trying to find the love of their lives and everything. So I want to, you know, it, it it came to me, you know, I have concerns about this whole relationship thing and dating thing. And so I kind of wanted to, to start off talking about that a little bit. And please, if you have any questions or comments to anyone that's out there, if you have any questions or comments, Ms. Garman, uh, please uh, log in and share your, share your perspective. So what I want to know is, do we really care about being divine in any way? You know, when you talk about what defines a man, most of us want to be tough and rough and macho and make a lot of money and conquer the world. You know what I'm saying? You know, those are the things that seem to define a man, being able to take care of your family, make a lot of money, and, you know, women will fall at your feet, you know. Uh, we live in a society that's very patriarchal. Uh, it's all about the masculine. Uh, it's, an, an, it's not, there's not enough perspective on the feminine. And so, basically, 
I feel that we're out of balance. So it takes, so what is, what do, do we really care about being divine in any way? Most men want sex, which they need a woman for or whatever. Most women want men primarily for security and status. Do we really care about presenting the best version of ourselves for each other or our families or our children? Yet, but each of us wants, each of us wants our partners, we want our partners to be perfect in every way without us striving for perfection within ourselves. So as you can see, this is a recipe for disaster. And it is it, it it causes a lot of problems, you know, uh, because we aren't better in our relationships. We have children. We break up. We get divorced. Children come out of it, and it all it all really happens because we really don't have a desire to be more evolved, which is paradoxical to me because we are here to do just that. So we're going to talk about what the divine masculine looks like, okay? Because most of us don't even know what it looks like. You know, if you if you talk to women, they want the perfect guy. They want him to have all these traits and they want to feel like they have the perfect guy. But if you ask them, what, what, what do you think he wants? It doesn't really matter what he wants. And likewise for men, you know, we want our women, we want the perfect woman. She needs to be beautiful, smart, you know, not overbearing, not too controlling, you know, serve us, wait on us, you know, but if you ask, if you ask her what she wants, if you ask him, what do she want? He really doesn't care about what she wants. And so it causes a problem because we want the best, but we don't expect that out of ourselves. We don't see a need to evolve. We don't see a need to become more aware. So what happens is it's all about being superficial. You know, I just look good on the outside. I got a house, I got my, got my stuff together and none of the inner work is done. You know, we walking around here with trauma, you know, unmet needs and, and all they do is play out within our romantic relationships. So, Let's look at some traits of the divine masculine. All right. Very quickly, I'm going to I'm going to go down the traits of the divine masculine. So here are some traits of a of an evolved masculine man. That's divine. Number one, he's deeply present. Number two, he's non-judgmental. Number three, he's supportive. Number four. He has discipline. Five, he's focused. Six, he's logical. Seven, he's confident. Eight, he's protective. Nine, he's honest. Ten, he's accountable. Eleven, he has integrity. 12, humility. 13, understands his boundaries. 14, offers stability and security. 15, he's responsible. And here's the last one that many of us don't even think about. And he understands the importance of the God and the goddess and all that is. Now, let's look at what the wounded masculine, a wounded masculine looks like. Controlling, aggressive, withdraws, avoids, too competitive, abusive, and unstable. Now, I wanna ask you, listening audience, the first 12 or 15 or whatever it was, do you know anybody that, do you know any men that you feel that possess those traits? How, do, how many men do you feel or know or think that, that possess those traits? And then I wanna ask you conversely, 
the last, what is it, seven, the last seven, the wounded masculine. How many men do you know like that, that have those traits? And I'm pretty sure many of us know far too many who we see as wounded masculine versus divine masculine. So let's talk about, let's go in deeper on each one of these traits. Because, you know, I was asking a, asking a close friend today is, uh, today, the question, do you think that we can modify our traits? Can we change? You know, can we change our traits? Do we care to? So let's, so let's talk about the traits of the divine masculine. Deeply present. So this man, he's, he's deeply present. What does that mean? That, mean being, that means being aware of what's going on around you, listening to understand your wife, your mother, your wife, your mother, your sister, for example. For example, presence allows us to lead our lives from a place of love, not be driven by the bait of fear. Truly embodied presence is a quality most humans are drawn toward. So when you're able to be deeply present, whether you're a girl or guy, it's a powerful, powerful tool. You make people feel special. They know you're listening because you care about them. Not when your spouses or your girlfriends are talking and you're playing video games or looking at the TV and not interested, missing most of what they're saying. But when they're listening, you're present. You're in the emotional space to hear what they're saying. Okay. Next trait, non-judgmental. Let's talk about what that is. The definition of non-judgmental as an open tending not to judge other people harshly or unfairly, or you can say a good friend is non-judgmental. No one wants to be judged. It's one of the many reasons a person might not reach out for help and support in the first place. The difficulty when exploring the subject of being non-judgmental is that you run the risk of putting people off by thinking they may be judged. Being non-judgmental is how you acknowledge, deal with, and manage those judgments, the influence and impact they have from both sides of the coin. It's about being open-minded, being present in the moment, actively listening, allowing that judgment to pass and not interfere with being fully present for that person or situation. To be non-judgmental, a great deal of personal awareness and understanding is required. Now, how many women out there, how many women would love to have that trait in their husbands, boyfriends, uncles, fathers? To be non-judgmental. As a matter of fact, we all want to be friends and deal with people who we feel are non-judgmental, right? All right. So the next trait, supportive. Defined as providing sympathy or encouragement. Different people need different kinds of support. Generally, it's a good idea to ask how you can help. Sometimes you can offer very practical things like driving your friend to the airport before dawn or helping them carry a, a washing machine up five flights of stairs. Other times, the best thing you can do is just listen without having to say anything. Whether your friend wants to vent after a stressful day or just needs a sounding board to figure out a difficult life decision, all you need to do is to be ready to listen. Be available to listen. Be available with advice. Show love and affection. Help out every now and then with daily chores or by running errands. Support the individual during the decision-making process. Be a person who the person you care about can trust and confide in. So that's what it means to be supportive. So when we talk about the divine masculine man, deeply present, non-judgmental, supportive. All right, let's go to the next trait. He has discipline or he has self-control. And this, this is the ability to control oneself, in particular one's emotions and desires or the expression of them in one's behavior, especially in difficult situations. 
Self-discipline is the ability to control your behavior in a way that leads you to be more productive and or have better habits. It is proven to lead to increased success and also more trust from your partners or from your family members. So he has, so the divine masculine has discipline. Next trait, focused. Defined as directing a great deal of attention, interest, or activity towards a particular aim. It requires emotional maturity and emotional intelligence. Okay? Do we have any questions about any of this so far? Before I keep going. Mo, do you have any comments? No, you can keep it going. I, you know I don't have any comments. Uh, you have any, say something. Say something for the audience, Mo. <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think that uh, bringing out emotional intelligence is a, is a big deal. It's it's an underrated uh, trait. It's an underrated trait. Yes, uh, a lot of men uh, tend to not see it that way. They don't realize that they're controlling. They don't realize that they have that they have uh, some of the other um, aspects going on. So when you have, you, you need to have the emotional intelligence to know when to apply the traits that you're describing. Okay. And they don't know when. At least just my experience. Okay, good. That's good. So you're talking about intentions, right? Yes. You know, because, you know, we're talking about relationships and you, part of all of these traits is that they allow you to have the relationship that you want to have and not, and to sabotage it less, Right. Right. All these traits that we've that we've read so far allow us to have better control, healthier, more balanced control over our relationships. And they, they should feel differently. OK, well, thank you for those comments. And I'll be asking you again. You can rest for sure of that. All right. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> All right. So the next trait is logical. And this is pretty simple. It's defined as or characterized by or being capable of clear sound reasoning okay logical so the, the masculine the divine masculine is logical the next trait confident confident is the next trait defined as knowing that you can handle the emotional outcome of whatever you face to be confident means you know that the struggle is not the end but a process to birth an outcome. To be confident means you know that outcome, whatever it may be, it's just that, an outcome. And once that outcome passes, there will be another chance in whatever way it presents itself for you to create a new outcome. That's a great definition of that, all right? Confident, that, that really resonated with me. You know, we have too many men out of here that are insecure and they're very, very insecure. They're not confident and they're trying to compensate by acting tough. Starting fights, acting tough, overly, ma overly machismo and all this stuff. And it's underneath, they lack a lot of confidence. They're scared. The next trait is to be protective. The divine masculine is protective. And that's defined as having or showing a strong wish to keep someone or something safe from harm or wanting to protect someone from criticism, hurt, danger, et cetera, because you like them very much. So just protecting, we know what protection means. Being in a space, being aware to be able to protect your loved ones, those you care about, your family, your ideas, right? The next trait is honesty or being honest. Being honest with yourself is key to personal development. It's defined as the product of truth, trust, and authenticity. It begins with yourself. Being honest means you admit to your actions even if you'll get in trouble. You are not being honest if you deny you did something wrong when you really did it. Honesty means you explain how a situation really happened. 
you are not being honest if you say something happened one way when it really happened another way. All right? So we so the divine masculine strives to be honest. It matters. The next trait is being accountable. Being accountable means taking ownership of the results of a task. An accountable person answers for their actions and the results achieved. It requires the person to provide an explanation for why and how success or failure occurred. I wanna read that again. Being accountable means taking ownership of the results of a task. An accountable person, Melvin, how are you doing? An accountable person answers for their actions and the results achieved. It requires a person to provide an explanation for why and how, su how success or failure occurred. All right? The divine masculine, he has integrity. And what is integrity? The quality of being honest and having strong moral principles, moral uprightness, the state of being whole and undivided. Integrity is connected to moral values, to our behavior and actions in difficult situations. It reflects ourselves as we really are, including our best selves, most sincere and trustworthy versions. Integrity can stem from different things. For some people, it's the personal highest goal. So the divine masculine strives to be a man of integrity. Very, very important. You know, what do you do when nobody's around? You know, do you do things just to be right? I mean, just to be a good person, a loving person. The divine masculine has that. The next trait is humility. This definition in turn means showing or having a consciousness of one's shortcomings or defects, modest, not proud, and not self-assertive. I like that definition. I'm going to read that again. All right. He's humble or has humility. This definition in turn means showing or having a consciousness of one's shortcomings or defects, modest, not proud, and not self-assertive. All right. Mr. Melvin, thanks for joining us. <laughs> uh, the divine masculine understands boundaries. Boundaries are defined as a limit or space between you and another person, a clear space between where you begin and another person ends. With every relationship, personal or professional, comes a need for boundaries. Boundaries are the invisible lines that keep us physically and emotionally safe while effectively functioning. They govern what we are willing to do and not do, say and hear and give and receive. So the divine masculine understands clear boundaries. He knows where you, he knows where he begins and ends and you start, right? He understands that. And he's okay with that. He's not enmeshed. It's not codependent. The divine masculine offers stability and security. And this is defined as the state or quality of being firm, steadiness, the strength to stand without being moved or overthrown. Security defined as mostly refers to protection from hostile forces or a state of being free from a threat. That's stability and security. All right. And the last one, the divine masculine is responsible. He's responsible. 
and this and, he, and this is defined as being accountable for one's actions and decisions having an obligation to do something or having control over or care for someone as part of one's job or role. So the divine masculine is responsible. And here's the last one that this person has that people don't normally talk about. The divine masculine understands the importance of the God and the goddess and all that is. And what that means is he understands his connection to the feminine or the goddess. And knowing that makes him more male, not less male. So I want to say that again. Say that again. He understands the importance of the god and the goddess and all that is. All right. Do we have any questions so far before we go into the wounded masculine? Hi, no, so I just wanted to say, just read like um, some comments um, sure. from Instagram. People get comfortable, that's where they mess up. And another <laughs> comment said, trying to flaunt with money instead of character. Absolutely. And um, definitely a lot of, uh, oh, okay, someone says um, Iwakele, which I know in Yoruba means good character. And yeah. one thing I always say personally is good character is the highest juju. So yes, yes that's very important. Yes. And yeah, you definitely got people watching. Good, good. <laughs> and you, and, we, and I, and I want to put this out there to the world. You know, how many women would want to date this guy or marry this person? <laughs> I would. <laughs> <laughs> the one in balance of course yes yes, yes. well he would have to be right mm -hmm. he, he would have to be this is something to strive for i don't believe most men most men even know what it would even look like or what to strive for and, and we have to get to a space to where we're looking at this stuff and striving to be better that's what these podcasts and shows are about to help to encourage and inspire us to even know what it looked like so that we can at least even strive for it. You know, it's so important. You know, we have the manosphere out here and, you know, all this talk online about, you know, a uh, high value man and, you know, what you got to say to a woman, you can't let her have any control and all this stuff. And it's just, it's just hiding insecurity you know, lack of confidence, and it's overcompensation. You don't have to do any of that. You know, it's about energy and what you're putting out there, you know, and this is about substance. It's not about, it's not about trickery. So this is why we're talking about these things. You know, it's, it's, it's very, very, it's, it's a lot of talk out there about, about how you got to deal with women and, you know, she can't have any male friends and all this stuff. But, but we're not talking about evolved women. We're talking about wounded women. Most of these strategies work for wounded women and wounded men. This stuff, you don't, you don't need this for evolved healthy women or evolved healthy men. So you have to ask yourself, what are you pursuing? Because you're, you're going to pursue where you are. All right, so let's talk about water. Water seeks its own level. I'm sorry. Water seeks its own level. Yes, yes, it does. Yes, it does. So we're going to talk about what the wounded masculine looks like. Okay, some of the traits of a wounded masculine. And I want to ask you guys. I want to ask you guys before I, 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 you know, I go into that section. Uh, how how many men do you know like this out there? For you ladies. Do you know any divine masculine men that has these traits? How many do you know? I don't know any, any that have the balance traits is what you're referring to? Yes. The, all these traits that I read for the divine masculine. Do you know any men that possess these traits? I know I know a uh, few men that have a few of these traits, but not all of them as a whole now. Okay. Abina, you know any men that have these traits? <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, and and I would say, you know, it's um, progress. There are those I know who are also working to to be there. That's great. Mm -hmm. That's great. That makes me feel good. That's great. That's great. Outstanding. Outstanding. Good. And uh, Mr. Walters, do you have any comments for us? Yeah, I got a lot of good traits. That's all I want to say. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Definitely the humility. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Y'all ain't right. Y'all ain't right. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Well, I'm looking to try to, I'm trying to follow Mr. Walters. I'm trying to work on those traits too. All right. So let's talk about the wounded masculine and see what that looks like. So the first trait of the wounded masculine is controlling. Uh, defined as, and, and we would say controlling behavior is when a person attempts to conform another person to their own needs or desires through some form of manipulation. This outsized desire for control is unhealthy, unhelpful, and may create relationship conflicts, but it's not always abusive. Controlling behavior becomes abusive when it is threatening. So that's the wounded masculine. We know a lot of those, right? So the first trait for that is controlling. The second trait is aggressive. And this is defined as hostile, injurious, or destructive behavior or outlook, especially when caused by frustration. The term aggression in psychology is in reference to a wide range of behaviors that could result in emotional, mental, or physical harm to a person, object, to person, objects, or others. Aggression is centered on purposely, even if subconsciously hurting another person, either emotionally or physically. It's too aggressive when he's out of balance. The wounded masculine, he's in pain. He's controlling and aggressive. The next trait, he withdraws. And this is defined as retreating or detaching from someone. Withdrawal may be viewed as a psychological defense mechanism. It is a psychoanalytic term and refers to the tendency to escape from or avoid situations that may be experienced as emotionally or psychologically challenging. So when he gets challenged, when he doesn't know what to do, he withdraws because he lacks emotional intelligence, emotional maturity. The next trait for the wounded masculine is they avoid, defined as to get away or keep away from a situation or avoidance coping, also known as avoidant coping, avoidant behaviors and escape coping it is a maladaptive form of coping in which a person changes their behavior to avoid thinking about, feeling, or doing difficult things. Avoiding stress might seem like a great way to become less stressed, but this isn't necessarily the case more often than not. So they, so they become avoidant, they check out. They're not present, they check out, they don't protect. They become combative and difficult, all right? The next trait, too competitive, defined as having or displaying a strong will to be more successful than others to the point of being combative. Psychologically, psychologically hyper competitiveness, competitiveness can be defined as an indiscriminate need to compete and win and to avoid losing at all costs. Hypercompetitive people can push themselves to take on too many roles and tasks and ultimately resulting in falling short of their goals as well as overexpending time and effort. Too competitive. Too competitive. The next trait from a wounded masculine is abusive. Abusive. And this is defined as engaging in or characterized by habitual violence and cruelty, using harsh, insulting language, 
an angry and abusive crowd, harsh and insultive, abusive language, language using or involving physical violence or emotional cruelty, abusive behavior, an abusive husband, and an abusive relationship. They're abusive. They become combative. Do we know people like this? Do we know men like this? Unstable. Mm. Unstable. Mm. The wounded masculine is unstable, defined as prone to issues of sudden changes of mood. When a person is said to be emotionally unstable, what it means is that the individual's reaction to issues is unpredictable. He or she can react to the same situation or event in different ways at different times. In different ways at different times. You don't know how they're going to respond. So they got you walking around on eggshells, praying that something challenging doesn't happen or something, the, the water heater blows out or whatever. They might become violent. The condition can be a behavioral disorder just as it can be, just as it also can be a mere attitude, attitudinal effect, defect. That's it. That's it. How many people do we know like that? Mo, you know anybody like that? Unfortunately, I do. I know a lot of people that are uh, in the um, in the wounded masculine. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how, um, I don't know if they see it that way, Oh, of but, course not. They're, but they're there, especially, uh, in, especially in relationships, in the areas of being controlling uh, and, and a little bit aggressive. Sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, I, 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 I'm thinking of a past boyfriend who was, who was hostile all the time. And I don't think he even realized he was hostile. Just, you know, just very not approachable you know, and always, there was always an argument. So yes, I've seen the wounded masculine more than I've seen the divine masculine. Yes. Yes. And we know Mr. Walters is not a wounded masculine. We know that. <laughs> you have any comments? Uh, I got scars though, as we all do. We all do. I got we scars. All do. And stuff. Yeah. I just want to say that, um, yeah, there's a lot of us that are walking around like that, but I also, want to say that um many don't understand how they actually got there right many do not understand that the childhood trauma still lives within them mm -hmm. and many do not know how to unwind that or how to identify certain feelings or thought patterns and begin to shrink those out of existence so when you don't understand that you vibrate off of the most dominant frequency and that's pretty much everything that you describe that's mm -hmm. Yes. So let me ask you, Mr. Walter, what would you what would you say to a young man that you can see as a wounded masculine? How, how would you guide him to get help? And, well, the first thing you have to meet them where they are. Right. And you have to understand that no one is just going to open up to you. Right. And it's you know, I'm not a clinical psychiatrist, don't claim to, but I have worked with a lot of our young people for many years. You mm -hmm. have to first gain that trust in order to mm -hmm. reach them because you do not know what it is that they have been through. Mm -hmm. But if you can manage to pierce through some of the layers of hurt, pain, and distrust, I think what is important to get them to understand first that your past is just that. It's your past. And that it's not how you started out but it's how you finish, mm -hmm. you know? And then pretty much just go into the, the ideas of how the brain works and the trickery of the deceptive mind. And, you know, because ultimately at the end of the day, it's, it's you got the two forces, the good and evil talking to you, mm -hmm. but you're in the middle. So if you can teach them to disconnect or not pay too much attention to the past, and then begin to consciously create what they want in the future, even though it's going to be knowing at them. Mm -hmm. Within time, you can decrease this energy field. Because that's what we're working with. It's an it's an energy field that permeates, that starts from the brain and permeates to the body and whatever it is that the mm -hmm. trauma is. 
that field of energy will express himself in that way, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. So if I'm a child who's been molested, then that experience is within the subconscious of the mind. Everything that happened with it is in that little cabinet. Mm -hmm. So when that pops up, that whole experience is going to fill the body and you're going to begin to express and act in that way. You know, yeah, you're going to relive it. You're going to relive it. You're going to relive it. And if I was uh, one who was, you know, beaten, whatever the case may be, the brain is going to release those chemicals, which is like cold information that has everything of that experience within it. Mm -hmm. The key is to, because I had to do a lot of work on myself as well. The key is to try to remain as much as possible in the middle and not become so much of a reactionary to that thought freak because that's all it is mm -hmm. that's all it is you know so there are different techniques you can use to combat that but if you can if you can be in the center and when it pops up kind of just watch it within 10 15 seconds 20 it dissipates because it's just a pop up of energy and then it just dissipates through the body and it leaves it's only when you focus on it. It's only when it you, pops up and you, you start looking at it. Oh, you then taking your creative conscious energy, attaching it to that thought and giving it life to grow. That's a short version. That's, yeah, that's great. That's, that's outstanding. I see, yeah. why, I see why Abina talks about you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, out, that's outstanding. Yes, and Melvin, Melvin is correct. He's he's talking about the uh, the biomechanics of healing, basically, and why is and why it's so important to do it. And just to hear that, you know, that he's done the work or is doing the work, and and, and that's what it's about. It's about caring enough to do the work and want to present to the word and, and understand that you're here to evolve. You're here to evolve and grow. That's what you're here to do. You know, and just knowing that is, you know, is is empowering. But uh, but yeah, it's uh it's very interesting, you know, uh just knowing what it looks like and striving for it. You know, I know that helps me just to say, okay, you know, man, I do that sometimes. Uh, I need to work on that one right there or whatever. It helps just to have a model of it and just have a desire to want to be better, to be a better man, to be more loving. You know, you don't hear brothers say that a lot, that they need to be more loving. You don't hear women say that a lot, to be honest, that they need to be more loving. You know, but the fact of the matter is we're here to ex we're here to express that, you know, and many of us have forgotten, you know, we've forgotten, you know. And so people like you and me and others that are here are to help us to remember. I mean, that's basically what this is about, to remember what we are, you know. So, uh, Ms. Garmin, you have any, you have any comments uh, to say about what Mr. Walters was talking about? I thought he did a, an outstanding job of, of uh, showing people how to approach the situation um, and an outstanding job of, of explaining the energy and how it goes through and how you're just, you're kind of just triggered by things and you just kind of are more reactionary in that, in that state. That's good to know, um, and it's good to know that you had to um, uh, get the person to trust you before you can talk about these things. Yes, I'm, uh, we know that you have a podcast, and you talk about trauma a lot on your podcast. Yes, I do. So I was just interested in, in your perspective of the wounded masculine, and if you've come across guys, and ha have you had, do you have a perspective on how to help them to heal uh, similar to what Mr. Walters has? I think he summed it up best, to be honest with you. I, I think he has, <laughs> he has, <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I'm not a therapist either, but he, he's, he's a, he's a person that has been through some things and, you know, it's, it's really nice to see that insight, you know, it's nice to, to have that shared experience with him, with a man and have it turn out in a, such a positive way as, as we're doing today. Mm -hmm. You know, Absolutely. Then I have another question for you, Ms. Garman. Of being a woman, you know, do you think that the, the strategies are any different for 
wounded feminine versus wounded men, uh, women who have similar issues, but display it differently at times. Sometimes it's similar, but it's different. It's, it's, I think it's very similar. Um, I do think that you do have to, to gain the person's trust. Uh, mm -hmm. that, that is first. I think that was a very key thing that um, Ms. Walters talked about. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't have that, you're not going to get anywhere with that person, be it therapy, be it uh, another person coming up to them, just trying to give them a helping hand to kind of guide them. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get anywhere without that. So I think that that was a very key point that he made. Uh, and then you can take it from there. Right. You no, know, right. you can get them to trust you and then you can try to guide them to therapy or you can help them um, befriend them and help guide, help them guide their thoughts or, or befriend them and help them with the transitions that they go through. Mm -hmm. um, there are people um, that uh, I think get thrown away, you know, oh, I don't ever want to see you again or this person's difficult in our family and we can't. We can't have him over to the family dinner because he acts out. We need to we need to mm. stop that, and we need to we need to understand why this person is in fact acting out, mm. and and embrace those difficult moments. And uh, maybe you'll see some men step up into their divine masculine. Maybe you'll see mm. you'll see that. And uh, women, we we need that from our men. We need them to step up. We want them to step up. We we want to see black men in that role. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, it's interesting because you know, uh, and I know, like I've talked to you about this, and I have other friends. How do you get the youth to trust you? So I've been there, wrote to everyone. How do you get the youth to trust you? How do you get the youth to trust us, Melvin? You're muted. Yeah, it's just muted. Um, I have, I, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Um, I've, I've, I've done pro bono work for like 30 years on Webster Avenue, M more than other places in Webster Avenue. Webster Avenue and the Bronx 169 had been really my training area. And a lot of my stuff had been pro bono. I worked with a lot of, uh, I was first of all, I was a manager of a video store called Botron Video. And so I would take a lot of these kids once I got to know their parents and everything else, I would take them out of the infested area, okay? And I would take them to places where the energy field was much lighter, mm. okay? But everything is energy. Everything is energy and it's encoded with whatever information is encoded in it and then it produces itself according to the information that's in it. So I knew that if I took them back in the 80s, the polo ground, for those who are familiar, was hot with the ball playing, the trickery and everything else and stuff. And our kids never seen a lot of that. So I would take them there. It was electrifying for them. It was exciting, you know. And I took some of them to certain places to see the 4th of July, not just on TV, but in person. Mm -hmm. And so I knew consciously what I was doing was that I was injecting a whole different experience within their mind based upon not just what was in their community. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I was able to redirect them, mold their minds a little bit and redirect them in another er in another way that I thought was much more positive and constructive. They still had to go back home to the environment in which they lived in, but they did understand that there was something else beside my, you know, my, the environment, my home and everything else and stuff. And I'm saying that, I'm saying that we're not lost. That's an illusion. And just follow me for a second, because words are powerful. We're not lost. Uh, we're not sinners. That's a big one. That's a that is a big very big one. I couldn't That's agree huge. More. That's okay? huge. I couldn't and, then agree more. and then I'll tell you what I mean by that, right? We're not wounded. What we are, right? What we are is we a little scarred. Now, some people will say, a little scarred, are you crazy? If I say to you that, if I'm talking to you psychologically and I say that you are a lot of scarred, you're, you're, you're terrible, you're garbage, you're this, you're that, then the subconscious brain will receive that information and magnify that word and cause you to act it out even greater. You take wow. a child who's behaving horribly and within time, if you keep implementing new structures of words, new pictures, everything else, 
you can change up the psychology and the physiology of that child because you're working with the conscious energy within the brain. If I'm lying, then everything that scripture talks about transforming yourself by putting off the old man, which is the old way of thinking, which is an old state of consciousness. When the scripture says, so as a man thinking in his heart, so is he. They're not talking about the heart in your chest. For those who say, oh, he doesn't know scripture, I recommend that you go back and you read what the Hebrew means when they say the heart, they're talking about the seat of consciousness. Mm -hmm. That's what they're talking about, right? Uh, when you read other texts from the, the, the Vedas and everything else, they're talking about changing up your mental psychology. So if they're saying it back then for hundreds and thousands of years, then they know that it can be done. That means it's doable. So when it comes to us ourselves and when it comes to working with the youth, we got to first understand is that you're not stuck. If you believe you're stuck, you're telling the genie within your head you're stuck and the genie is going to say, okay, I have a cadaver, you're stuck. Mm -hmm. And it's going to constantly produce that reality for you. But if you, if so, if you say I'm a bad person, uh, I'm the way that I am because my father left me, or I've been so badly abused, I ain't never going to find no one, right? Then you are pretty much digging that grave that you have been living in for such a long time because you can find people who have been in the same predicament that you were, and they turned their life around. They're, mm -hmm. they are, uh, they're. Their anatomy, their physiology, their whole human chemical makeup is no different. It's just that they changed up the story they've been telling themselves for such a long time. Mm -hmm. You see? And that's what we have to understand. Is so when we wake up in the morning, we say, oh, my God, here's a good example. <laughs> the, we Black people are the way we are because we're just not, <laughs> we're just not as good as the Chinese or anybody else. Not true. But it, but, exactly. So what I'm saying is true. that everybody who come and I'm not dismissing anybody else. So please don't take this the wrong way. I'm talking about here in America. Okay. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the people who created, who helped to create this, this um, experiment, but that, you know, that's what America is. It's an experiment. Literally, mm -hmm. it's an experiment. After they broke away from the British, they say, hey, let's create something similar to that. It's an experiment. This whole thing that we're living is we're living through somebody else's matrix, concepts and ideas of how they perceive reality to be. They construct the school system, the health care system. It doesn't work for you because it's not doesn't have an Afrocentric view to it, perspective. So you're trying to get out of a box that they created for you, only to come out of that box into another one. But my point that I'm trying to say is this, that whatever you tell yourself in the morning or all day long, that is what that genie in your mind, that subconscious mind is going to manifest for you. So if you say that I'm poor, you whatever you tell yourself is going to create it for you. Mm -hmm. and, and no disrespect to those who are into oils and everything else. Those are trickets. They're tools to be used. Okay. The stones, the crystals, they're tools. Mm -hmm. It's never been a crystal or stone that ever, and you know, some you know, people rub and say, Oh, I'm new. No, mm -hmm. they are tools to be used to help you to focus on what you're saying within your head. You want to create mm -hmm. that's what this is. You are the power, we're there the is, creators. You are the right, right. You mm -hmm. are the creators of your own reality, of yes. your own destiny. Don't get caught up in this, this, um. This man-made concept that there's a God in the universe that's going to come and save you and everything no. else that can easily be dispelled. You can look at the millions of people who've been dying, okay, who dying right now, babies and all, okay. Mm -hmm. And if the babies are saved, you now the millions of people are saved is going to be saved by another human. Okay, we are it. We are the power source. We are all that there is. Now, is there something else beyond us? Definitely, we mm -hmm. do not know what that is. But there is something definitely, but I'm saying on this level in which we can kind of work with, we are the power source. If you're in an abusive relationship and you're still staying in that abusive relationship, it's because you have been conditioned to be fearful and that you can't get out of it. Right. You, you believe you deserve it. You believe that you deserve it because mm -hmm. that's the program. 
I mean, that you acquired. That's right. That you acquired, and the others have placed within your head. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's why you're in it. You're not bad. You're not right. working. You're not none of those things. Okay. It's just that you're working with the wrong mental program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so we, we, we can, as long as we start learning how we work, we can then grab the young ones, get them off the TVs and the, the games, which is a design tool of destruction because it's, oh my God, it's horrible, right? We got to give them something else tangible, meet them where they are. They like this, introduce this to them, and then gradually bring them over to something else a little bit different and get their mind to transform and shape to something else. And then, you know, who knows? And hopefully mm -hmm. it works out. <laughs> so, <I'm saying>. Yes. <laughs> Is that a whole lot, man? <laughs> you did say a whole lot, but it was it was good. <laughs> it was good. It was good. Uh, Abina, you have any more comments to say about what uh, comments about what Mr. Walters said? Uh oh, question: How do you counter the sense of despair with the young men? Yes, counter. Counter. How do we counter the sense of despair with the young men? That's a question for me of you. You can go ahead. You are you on the roll right now. You go ahead. I want to hear what you got to say. Okay. Listen, I haven't, I'm not muted, right? Because my eyes are. No, we can hear you. Okay. You're never I, muted, Melvin. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Evan. I appreciate that. Um, I have an organization called You Can Change. Okay. And it's basically designed for the male youth, not excluding the females, but basically designed for the male youth, simply because until we are able to stand, stand in the position of power and understand our strength, we cannot protect the earth, meaning the, the females, and we cannot protect the offsprings that we are trying to bring forth through them. Uh -huh. Okay, so again, males were designed to be masculine. Let's just get that out of the way. Okay, mm -hmm. they're not to be, they were not, we were not designed to be, you know, masculine, you know, masculine and, and, and feminine at the same time. We do have feminality within us. Yes. There's not a human being upon this planet that does not have both of that energy field within it. But that's just how the creator constructed it. But understand this, okay? We were designed to build. We were designed to destroy, meaning tear stuff down. We were designed to protect, okay? Mm -hmm. We were designed, just hear me out. We were designed to place order in our environment where there is no order and make sure that it stays in order because at the end of the day, when it becomes out of order, we're the one that got to put the shit back in order. Now, how do I connect? How do I relate that between a man and a woman, right? Going back to what you said, a strong man knows that he does not have to overexert himself with the woman. Mm -hmm. Guess what women, guess what a real woman knows? Mm -hmm. She knows that you know what? She knows spiritually that that's a man. Mm -hmm. That's a man. And, and it had nothing to do with being submissive, but that's a man, and I'm going to stay in my lane and let him deal with that. You know, they, they, there's a science to all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. But we're in a place right now where everything is so backwards. So to add and to your question is this. Again, you have to meet them where they are. You have to study the psychology of the male principle, okay? And I don't believe that only a man can talk to a male and help them understand. They need both parties. They need both parties, but both parties must be on one accord when it comes to doing this stuff because we're fragile. Mm -hmm. we, we, we have been hurt and we've been hurt because the system knows that in order to infiltrate and maintain their seat of authority, you have to remove from the structure, the, their structure, the first line of defense, and that is the man. Mm -hmm. that is the man and then to get the woman to believe that they're being compensated which is a trick being compensated for the absence of man the same entity that's responsible for destroying the household will turn around and say i'll give you everything that you need you don't need the man i'll give you money 
Okay, whatever it is that I get, whatever it is you need, I'll give it to you. Just as long as you are not unified back with that other power source that you need to elevate yourself. You know, mm -hmm. as long as you get all your degrees, you're good. You see where he's at. You see where you at. You know, and I'm not knocking it. It's all good. I got degrees. I my my lady got degrees as well. You know, but even sometimes we bump head. But what I'm saying is that you get caught up in that trap that I got this, I got that. You stay all day in school, college after college. Who's watching Malcolm? Who's watching Tamika? Who's raising? Because if no one's watching them, who's raising besides the streets and the media? Mm -hmm. So it's a game. It's a game. We have to meet them where they are. We have to learn how to communicate with them. And then we have to tell ourselves that, you know what? If I'm trying to share something with him or her, and they become agitated to me. I can't become defensive. I can't take mm -hmm. it as, you know, as they're attacking me because they're speaking, they're, pro they're communicating from a place of hurt. Mm -hmm. Remember, we came before them. They didn't come before us. And they come in and after us and they wonder why it's so crazy. And why aren't you, why not, why aren't you protecting us? Why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing that? And so they feel helpless. They feel helpless, mm -hmm. you know? So we have to create things, our own things that we can get them into, you know, work with them slowly, but you have to understand some psychology as well. And then you have to also understand some mind science, some tricks and stuff that could be used to help them to shrink these thoughts and ideas and get them to work through them. That's all another subject, that's NLP. I'm always saying that, you know? Mm -hmm. so, I don't know, hopefully that, you know, I said a lot, but you said a lot. It was, it was great. It was great, Melvin. It was, it was great. Yes, uh, he he's definitely he's raised some very powerful points uh, about us being under attack, right? Being manipulated to help break us down. And you're right. The big the the big weapon, the big uh, target of choice is our men. That's for sure. Because then we don't have any defense. Women don't have any defense. And to trick her that she doesn't need the man is, is powerful indeed. And we have to be smarter. We have to be better. We have to stand up. You know, those of us that are older, we can't expect the young men to lead us. Those of us that are older have to be an example. We have to be a better example, you know, and kind of lead the way and take these guys under our wing. So that's admirable what you're doing. Absolutely. Let me just piggyback on, on this one thing. It's flashing. I just want to, and now I'm going to explain it to you, right? When you hear the word sin, right? This is, remember, this is stuff that they did to keep us submissive, to break us down psychologically. Because if you break them down psychologically, you can then control everything else. Mm -hmm. If I say to you, according to what sin is, according to scripture, if I say to you that you are a sinner, then you immediately will, you, you will, excuse me, you will immediately associate that with hell. You will immediately associate that with not being good in God's eyes. You immediately, you will immediately. You're less than. It that means that you're less than. Yeah. Right. So I urge everybody right now, pull out your cell phone. Okay, and just type in the ideology, the origin of the word before scripture and see what it means. It has no negative connotation to it whatsoever. It means missing the mark. Mm -hmm. Now, you could take that term and say, well, you error. But does error mean you're going to hell? You know, you know, Tamika. You, you know, I told you, stop staying up all night and study for this test. You know what? And then next day you have the school test and you fell. You, 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 you error. You made an error. Your error is your form of thinking. So now you got to pay the consequences. You're not going to hell. Okay. So I, I'm bringing that up because words are very, they're powerful. Mm -hmm. You know, they're powerful, you know, and, and, and we have to understand that we are very deceived, man, very deceived, man. Mm -hmm. but we're very powerful. 
And, and people don't understand this. And I say this, you are powerful. Um, America could not be what it was if it was not for the black man and the black woman. Mm -hmm. I'm not tooting my horn. I'm saying it could not no, it's be. True. It's true. It's true. And the more you know about your history, you go Google Gaga over this thing. Mm -hmm. You listen. Ask people how many of them know that they're living in a cyclic reality or universe. They say, what do you mean? Everything moves in a circular fashion. They say, well, what do you mean by that? So let's say, listen, how is it that you can you can type in to your computer, what is the cosmic calendar going to be next year? And they'll tell you what it is. But how is that possible unless somebody else before you, thousands of years, recorded it? <laughs> you mm -hmm. understand what I'm trying to say? We're living in a we're living in a loop, and that there's a lot of negative in, within this loop. There's a lot of positive within this loop. Mm -hmm. You know, so you just got to focus on. You got to consciously say what you're going to focus on, consciously say what you want to help, consciously say what you're going to do, and regardless of what frustration and confusion come your way, you must stay the course. You must stay the course. This organization that I'm building is. It's, I, I get frustrated because the people who are helping me, I wish they can be more attentive, more have more time. But the, the ladies have families and they're pretty much single. I take that into to consideration. Right. I don't get upset. I just say, listen, I got to keep it moving. I got to find somebody else as well. I can add on to it, not push them out, but add on to it. Because my main objective is to bring is to make you can change a physical reality to where I can then go out into these community, grab up these young men. If I can alter recidivism, then I, I'll do that as well. But I must take this philosophy in which I'm working with to work with our people and give them something tangible to work with. We can do it. You know? Outstanding. Yeah. Outstanding. And I'm and you're gonna get it done. I got it. That's my yes. point. And then yes. I'll die afterwards. I believe it. <laughs> not going nowhere yet. No, not yet. Not, not yet. yet. It's my universal calling. I really believe that. Maybe Outstanding. Yeah. So you're honoring, so you're you're living with your purpose. You know, I'm living with my with purpose. purpose. Yes. I've been doing it for a long time, for 30 years. I decided to get my 501c3. I got everything, everything. Everything. You can go to you can change dot life if you want to see the web page. <laughs> you know? Someone asked the question, is there antagonism between men and women? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there is. Yeah, there's, there's, listen, you cannot get away from it. No, as long there as is. we live in existence where there is duality, there's going to be antagonism. Mm -hmm. The question is, what's causing the antagonism? Right, and how do you frame manage of, it? Right, what frame of thought? Are people entertaining that's bringing about that antagonist? That's always going to be there, and it, it doesn't. It doesn't necessarily mean that's a bad thing. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that's a bad thing, you know. You know, babe. Listen, I, I, you know, I tell you all the time. You know, you know, turn off the light when you leave the room. Turn off the light. You know, it's just she. She may say to me, "Listen, pull the toilet seat down. Pull the toilet seat down." You know, and it's, it's not all bad. You, it's a good thing. Because if you didn't have either of them, you would not grow. You would not learn. So it depends upon how you look at it. I want to ask, I want to ask Mo Garming about her perspective on that question. Uh, are you there, Ms. Garmin? I'm sorry, I was in the other room with Amina for a brief second. What was the question? Uh, is there antagonism between men and women, I believe, something like that? Actually, yes. And I, I, I believe uh, I heard a little bit of what Ms. Walsh was talking about. And I, I think it, 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 go, it comes from uh, the, the times of slavery, uh, for lack of another uh, time to put a different phrase on it. When they got rid of the Black male and, and the woman had to observe the Black man get, you know, uh, his power stripped. Mm. From him that that had an impact mm. Mm. it had a lasting impact mm. Mm. so yeah wow wow yes there is there is antagonism and uh but 
it doesn't mean that all is lost. There's going to be antagonism. Uh, there's been oppression. Yes. There's been deception. Yes. You know, there's been all types of things going on to keep us apart and to keep us under their thumb. And but we have to grow up. We have to figure it out. I mean, this is what we're here for. You know, when we decided to incarnate as what we are, we we have to deal with all that goes along with that incarnation. So, you know, we are here to overcome it. And that that's basically what Mr. Walters is talking about. We are here to overcome it. We create this with our victimization and we have to move beyond that. And so the more we learn about how it works, the more we the more we figure that out and learn how it works, then we can reverse it. We can begin to empower ourselves. This is about empowerment. This is about empowerment for women. You know, this is about the op oppression of women. This is about the oppression of different ethnic groups, African Americans in this country, where there is systematic oppression. Yes. We don't have to succumb to it, but we need to heal. You know, the reason why we have a hard time getting around it is because we have been healed from it. We just we just go on and on talking about what happened, what happened. We know that. We've but been we traumatized. Have to, we have to move towards healing. We've been traumatized. So we're having a, uh, I think we're having a trauma response. Absolutely. We have a very realistic trauma response. Absolutely. And we're, we're literally going through shock. Yes. Denial, anger, yes, all the, all that the psychological, field, yes. all those psychological aspects of it. Yes, and you know, so when we heal from it, you know, we the terrorizing is still going on today um, of 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 that phenomenon. We still mm -hmm. see, you know, black men being singled out and being abused by police, being blue, abused by Karens. On, on the street, you know, getting police called on them for, for just walking in a park or mm -hmm. things like that. I mean, it's, it's kind of crazy, but, um, you know, uh, the oppressor does not want to give up power easily and we have to claim our ourselves. I think right now we're seeing that we're, we're trying to get into balance right now. Right. We're standing up, you know, right. and, the and, and, and these things are being filmed now you know, it's not that they're going away. They're just being filmed. Right. We know okay. more due to social media. Yes. Yes. Social media is, is allowing everybody more, in the no world more. to see the atrocities that are going on. Mm -hmm. So we can heal now because people can see why we're so angry. Yes. People can right. see why the Black man is so angry. Why Why is the Black woman uh, angry with the Black man and, and vice versa? So... You know, when we talk about those scars, Mr. Walters, we, we can now see where those scars are coming from. Yes, yeah. yeah. and and I and, and I want to piggyback on what Ms. Gorman said because I, you know I often say this that when we come down here, it's an individual sport, right? Mm -hmm. you know, we have families, we have our loved ones, we have people that we work with. You know, we have whole community that we are part of. But it is make no mistake about it. It is about your individual expansion. When I hear Mr. Walters talk about his purpose and what he's trying to do, this is about his expansion. This is about his expression, you know, helping other young men to heal so that they can become empowered. They're not the only ones that need to heal. Us older guys need to heal also. Mm -hmm. uh, older women need to heal. We all need to heal. Mm -hmm. And so when I say it is an individual sport, we're in these relationships. It's not about what she's doing. How can I be better individually? How can I be better? When I'm better, then I raise better children. When I'm better, then I'm a better neighbor. You know, I'm a better coworker. I'm a better friend. Okay. And it does take a village to raise all of that. So we have to take individual responsibility on our expansion. We have to raise the bar as to what we expect from our relationships, from our romantic relationships, from our friends. And when we begin to do that and, and, and create more of more Melvins out there, right? More of people that care. All of us. Huh? <laughs> more of all of us. More of all of us, right? Yeah. I'm using you as an example right now because of what you're doing. You're, you're showing oh. love, right? You're showing love. 
is what you're doing. It's an expression of love. You're saying my life's purpose is to help these young men to heal. You're mm -hmm. showing love. And we know the power of that. That's what we're here to do is to express more love. Yeah. So it's very, very, it's very, very important that we can know the history, but spirituality is definitely the way. The history yeah. only, only, only takes you so far. Yeah. You know, yeah. we're here to evolve. So this has been a great conversation. You have any more to say, Ms. Walsh? Yeah, I just want to say thing. one thing, which is sure. very which is important. Um, when you hear people talk about your earthly purpose, or when you hear people talk about you chose this experience, right? Um, we, we'll say we'll say that um, we're using a um, we're using a theory because of the plane in which we're living on in this third dimensional plane, you know. But then there is another plane from which it is that we come from, right? Which we can call it. They say the fourth, fifth, sixth. I don't put those categories there because we don't know we're endless i like to say we come from mm -hmm. the field <laughs> okay for whatever but what we're dealing with what we like to say we start thinking in terms of contracts a contract that we agree to uphold right but before we came here we said okay listen in order for me to have a higher experience when i got when i go back home and in my my next life I am going to sign this contract to endure this experience here on this planet Earth. Okay. Kind of like what they mean. Well, contracts can be broken. Well, spiritual mm -hmm. contracts can be broken. So in other words, if before you came into the physical existence, you said, you know what? Um, I want to learn X, Y, and Z because it's going to make me better in the next plane. And you get here and you go, man, I can't take this. This physical earthly form, you say, I no longer want to be in a relationship with you. I no longer want to live in that environment. So what I'm trying to say in a nutshell is that whatever experience that you're experiencing right now, as long as you psychologically agree to it and, and, and hold on to it, you're constantly agreeing to that contract for the universe to continue to manifest that which you refuse to break and let go of. Mm -hmm. You can break that contract. I, I'm a slave. I'm not. I'm this. You can break that contract. There's nothing is binding in this hemisphere. Let go of the fear first, and the illusions. Break that contract and watch what happens. Then the other reality can come in, and you can exhale and everything else and stuff. Nothing is fixed in this. Existence. No, not at all. Yeah, not That's at all. It. We created. Thank you yeah. for the, thank you for that. You're welcome. You're welcome. Abina, the idea of a man being a simp, is that a trauma response? A what? The idea of a man being a simp, is that a trauma response? What's the last word you said? Is that a trauma response? No, the idea of a man being a, a man what? being a simp, S-I-M-P, a simp. What is that? A simp is a man, uh, is what... Out of the manosphere, it's a it's a guy who is not a masculine or an alpha male. Is he, he caters more to women instead of standing up more? That's the person that they call a son, basically. He's not an alpha man. So he cannot and find so him. the rest of that statement said what? Can a man he's not an alpha man? He's an not alpha. an alpha man. But what's the rest of the statement? Can a man? I'm sorry, read it once more time from the beginning. I got what a simp is. Yes. says is that a trauma response it, it depends upon it depends upon what else is going on it depends you know if, if you have if you have guys who just want to cater to women it, it i think there's more information needs to be given if you have like a young man who likes to just play with dolls and everything else and stuff then i think that's more psychological as well as as well as maybe some, I don't know, chemicals and stuff that's the 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 dwarf the endorphins from being developed within that individual as well. Or that heightened the estrogen, the hormonal less the hormonal level of estrogen within the individual. So it's it's a lot. It's need more information for the individual. Yeah, I don't 
I don't think I don't think it means I don't think it's a trauma situation at all. Uh, I think I think there's a lot of uh, pseudo machismo going on out here and everything. And, you know, they're trying to say simps are weak and all this stuff. I mean, I think some of these some of these high value men or macho guys is, are part of trauma. Also, it all depends. Yeah. Uh, they may call they may call a guy that actually respects a woman and try to treat her a certain way, a simp because he's not, you know, acting a certain way, but not necessarily. I don't think that's necessarily a trauma response. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> Mo, I changed, I changed pampers. Yeah. I changed but... pampers and my lady grandson with your boys and stuff, you know, I, I, I kissed them. I, I love them, I, you know, um, I do most of the cooking in my house and stuff, you know, so I don't, I guess I'm a simp. <laughs> Yeah, right. So you, you know, my but you put your hand on my woman, you will see just how much of a masculine being I'm as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Marsha, what do you think about that? About a trauma response? Yes, a scent being a trauma response. I'm trying to get my phone working. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> um, I I think you described it best. That that was funny, but um. I, I think um, people people going through very stressful times and um, very stressful events. Um, I think that is trauma. I, I I think when they when they go through it, I don't think that's I don't think that's a simp. I don't. Yeah. You know, I was thinking about this young lady when I used to go to church way back when and she had a uh she had two kids she yeah i guess you could say it's a form of unconscious trauma uh yeah. she had two kids she had a girl and then she had a um she had a boy and the boy liked to play with the girls in church and i don't mean he was no romeo he just liked to do girl stuff meanwhile the young boys in church would look at him like well like we you know he we didn't want him with us and stuff but and when you look at the mama, the mama has gone through some trauma. Mm -hmm. and the mama, I think, in a lot of times, were mistreated by a masculine entity. And unconsciously, sometimes they can deflect their, their hurt upon the male. You know? Yes. So yeah. there's a lot of stuff involved. It's a lot of stuff, man. So here, yes, okay, so, some, some women, some women do have a uh, who do have that that haven't done any work themselves. They will take out all those things. They they have childhood trauma that they haven't resolved. They have daddy issues. They have abandonment issues, and they they don't um, attach well because of that. They have all these attachment disorders because they because their father wasn't there because their mother wasn't there and they didn't connect well. So they don't know how to, they don't know how, they simply don't know how to connect. So here's here's the definition of a simp, okay? A simp is slang for a person, typically a man who is desperate for the attention and affection of someone else, typically a woman. That's what a simp is. So he's desperate. He's desperate for the attention of a woman. So usually you're gonna have some abandonment issues with that. The mother is not there or the relationship with the mother is very bad. She's very demanding or whatever. And so, yes, it can be created by dysfunction. But I think sometimes they go overboard with that. You know, if you treat a woman, if you actually care and want to tell her, you get called a simp and all this nonsense. Mm. I, I think it's very important with the information out here to, to, to not go too far to the left or too far to the right, but really focus on intentions. It's, it doesn't make you a simp to show someone love. Right? I agree. You know, it doesn't, that doesn't mean that. That doesn't mean that you have to be a pushover to show someone, someone, someone love. And when we talked about a divine masculine man tonight, one of the issues, one of the traits that they have was boundaries. Mm -hmm. Understanding their boundaries. You know, being protective. That doesn't make you a simp to, to be loving to somebody, but me, it doesn't mean that you're a pushover. So it's, it's, it's a lot of this type of rhetoric out here right now, and it, it needs to be addressed a little bit because there's a lot of confusion, particularly for our young men, yeah. particularly for our young men. And this is why I mentioned understanding the God and the goddess, 
You know, we all have feminine and masculine within us both. But when we incarnate as a man, we are predominantly masculine. When you incarnate as a woman, you are predominantly feminine. Anytime you're in your creative, that's you're in your feminine. Yeah. You know, everybody wants to talk about, you know, who, like who gets all the women, right? These artists, these musicians, these leaders that are able to immobilize people and get them fired up. You know, yes, women marry professionals. They, they make a logical choice, but it's the men who are in their creative that make women go crazy, right? Because they're in their creative, your artists, your musicians, and their feminine your leaders, feminine. right? That can mobilize large amounts of people and make them feel, uh, create movements. When that happens, that's in the feminine. That's in the feminine. And so we get it twisted. We think it's all about the logical, but to create, to, to move mountains is in, that's in the feminine. So we have both with we have both within us. The more we understand it, the more we have the, the, the more we're able to do that. The divine masculine understands that. You know, they understand how to connect with the feminine or their wives or their daughters or their sisters. It's not this way or one way all the time, but it, but they flow, they flow between it as it's needed. But you incarnate, you're predominantly male. So just wanted to go off on that tangent for a second. Do we have any more? Do you want to wrap this up? you have any more questions, Abina? Oh. That was an excellent breakdown. Thank you. Yeah, I can barely hear you. Oh, no, that was a, that was a very nice breakdown, you know, of, Thank because you. I think sometimes men here, I don't have a feminine side. I don't have a feminine side. Like, yes, you, you do. You wouldn't yes, be you able do. to survive. Yes. You just don't understand. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So that, that was a very good breakdown. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. So does anybody else have any questions? Uh, is it, do we wrap this up or? Nothing knows. You can go on. <laughs> I'm good, Abby. Uh -huh. Just check out my website. You can change that life. And um, I, I love any uh, support information and even work with people to get this thing going. That's it. Okay. Um, so okay. I'm just seeing um, there's definitely a lot of people watching a lot of um, likes, and um, I don't see any other questions. Um, yeah, I don't see any other questions. Can you tell us when you will be in New York and what you will be doing in New York? Don't me. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm I'm going to be at the Mail to Soul, well, Soul to Mail. Extravaganza on June 10th. Mm -hmm. the, and I'm, I'm going to talk about the divine masculine. I think Mr. Melvin's going to be there also, as far as I, I saw on the on the sheet. Uh, yeah. So I'm looking forward, I'm looking forward to that. And hopefully we can bring that same event to Philadelphia in the coming months. Because we definitely, God knows we need it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're going to bring the show on the road. Yep. Just as powerful too. Very powerful. What's her name? The sister with the the sister was speaking. Moncho. Oh, oh yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I like your wisdom. Very good. Thank you. I like yours too, Mr. Waters. You have <laughs> a lot. You have a lot to say, and and people should really listen because you you have a lot of wisdom there. I would love to get into the science of it one day. Really help you understand what's going on. You could break it down and begin to heal. That's what I like. Yes. Formulas, strategies and formulas. And that's what we're not working with today. Just mm -hmm. a lot of chatter, you know. That's true. Actually, is actually no direction. No direction at all. No direction. But there's actually strategies and formulas that you can use to alter the physiology of your whole being. Mm -hmm. I want to get into that one day. All right. Ho hopefully, you talk about that at the event on June tenth. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. And if there's anybody, because my eyesight is 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 not perfect, I will accept anybody's help as well. In terms, if I bring some stuff that I may want people to like go over, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Let me know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's definitely. a final question. Okay. In in the chat. 
I think I saw it, then it went away. Something about aggression? Yes. Um, How do you address aggression in the youth? It's a good question. Like, are you supposed to be afraid when you sometimes want to just um, uh, address them? Or is that something for men to do or for women to do? I, I think I think that the uh, the aggression needs to be channeled. Um, the youth have don't have they don't. We used to go outside when we were younger. Now they play video games. I mean, not not to be funny or anything. There's nothing wrong with video games. There's a time and a place for different things, and there's no balance with that. So you don't see kids like when I was a kid. My father would say, "Be home before the street lights went out." You know. And uh, I, I would get out all the, those aggressions with my girlfriends and we'd play and run and jump and go to the playground and go around the corner. And we did all those fun things. And the guys too, they were on the playground playing basketball and football and baseball. You don't see that in neighborhoods anymore. Everybody's in the house. Yep. So how can you channel aggression when you don't, when you don't allow the children to be children? Yep. Mr. Walters, do you have any comments on that? Yeah, real quick, real quick. Uh, 2016, remember the date, 2016, actually 2010, on Webster Avenue, I said to a bunch of older folks, right? Listen, man, I'm going to draw a Scalzi board. Scalzi? Kids don't, they don't know about no Scalzi, they don't want to play Scalzi, right? So I was like, I'm going to draw a Scalzi board. So I drew the Scalzi board on the floor, showed the kids how to play, gave them the little plastic tops and everything, right? And then at the rest of the summer, more kids came and they were playing. Scalzi was something that we were playing in, 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 <laughs> in the 80s, okay? 80s. Now we're talking about 2010. Again, we're talking about introducing stuff to them without biases, okay? Uh -huh. 2016, I haven't been over there in a while. When I saw somebody who had kids and then now I'm going, he says, man, Mel, you know, you should go back over there and, and do something with these kids, right? So I said, okay, I brought flag football, right? Brought flag football over there. Now Webster Avenue is inundated with a bunch of Africans and stuff. And those kids are like, wow. It's just wow, right? So, 2016 was, was doing a time where there was a lot of slagging, right? Pants, pants hanging out there behind and stuff, right? So none of these kids knew me. Some of the adults knew me. Some of the other kids knew me through their parents. So I said, listen, guys, they were just running around doing nothing. Nothing, no direction, no what I call organized play. So I said, guys, listen, you want to play flag football? Some of them knew who, what it was. Some of them didn't, right? Now you got to be real careful. This is important, right? So I said, now they're sagging, okay? These are kids. So I said, listen, I explained it to them, right? And then I took the belts and I, I used one kid to put the belt on. You got to be careful because there's new people living over there in the time that we're living in. And then I had all the other kids put the belts on each other. Do you understand where I'm going with this? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Show them how to play. Just listen. Show them how to play, right? So they had a great time. They play for like about 40 minutes before they started cursing each other out and everything and the cursing and the anger and everything. It, it doesn't last, you know? So you don't like, oh, this faith, let the kids be kids. When it was over, I was curious. When it was over, this is 2016. I said, guys, you guys ever heard of Johnny on a Pony? <laughs> right? So they said, Johnny on a Pony? They said, nah. So Johnny on a Pony basically goes like this. You pick two teams. You got one person standing up against the wall who's the pillow. Then another kid leans down and position himself with security. Another kid leans down behind that kid and they got a line where they just line up like this, you know, mm -hmm. a chain. Then you have the other team who has to run and jump on that team that's, that's now bend over until everybody gets on and then they shake them off. My point was this, Johnny on the Pony was something that was done in the 60s. And when you look at the face, the laughter, the joy. Now, I had to get past the homo thing because they had to bend down behind another person. So once we got past that whole, you know, that all that nonsense, they enjoyed themselves. 
So to me, it's ignorant when people say you can't do nothing with them youth. They don't want to do that. That's basketball been around since, I don't know what, they were doing this stuff in Africa. God knows how many hundreds of years ago. They're still playing it today. Mm -hmm. It isn't that they don't want to play. It isn't that they don't want to engage themselves. It's that no one's taking the time to do these things with them. Mm -hmm. We say how bad they are. We say they're out of control. But how much time did you take to say, listen, we're going to play this game, and then I'm going to buy you some pizza? Mm -hmm. We don't do that. We talk about how bad they are. Mm -hmm. No one said, listen, man, you know what? I'm going to find some people in the community and we're going to grab some of these kids, get some baseball bats, some gloves, because we used to do that back then. Take them to the park. We don't do that no more. Mm -hmm. So the only, the only people that's guiding them is social media. I it's agree. Okay? I agree. And that's, and that's a trap. Their minds are being rewired for death, destruction, everything yep. else. If you watch News 12, you yep. watch everything is negative, 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 negative. And so you're building up the brain with destructive energy. Negative energy is designed to tear stuff down. Mm -hmm. There is no equilibrium there. It's destructive. So if you're with a man or you're with a woman and they're always angry, they have a built up of negative energy that they have never found a way to channel it through. Nothing nice or light was introduced to them. And that's where we are. Mm -hmm. We're not, we're, you know, COVID, you know why so many people killed themselves? The suicide rate was bananas. It was bananas because people who go, people who go to nightclubs constantly, they go to bars, you know, they had an outlet. They still have the hurt and pain that we, we all were dealing with, but they had a distraction. The kids who had abusive parents, they had a distraction. That was called school. They left for a few hours and they got away from it. The, the mother or the wife who was getting beaten the hell out of by the husband or whatever the case may be, they had an outlet. It was called work. It was called going to the club. It was called going shopping. COVID said you have to stay in your house and deal with those inner demons. And those who could not deal with that, they canceled their earthly contract. Deep. <laughs> I'm going to leave it there. So we, we have to, we can't talk no more. Strategies and formulas and let's execute. Let's get together. Let's sit down. Let's figure out how we're going to execute this stuff. And let's be about God's business and bring him back heaven on earth instead of hell. Period. I'm done for the night. Well said. <laughs> well said. Well said. Well said. And on that note, Abinar? I'm here. I'm okay. here. I'm here. Do you want to close this out or have we got more or? Oh, yeah. I think I think we need to save some for June 10th. So, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, thank you. Thank you for being here long distance from, from Philadelphia. <laughs> thank you. I know that many people will be watching the the replay of this, but you did a wonderful breakdown on the divine masculine and the wounded masculine because there's no roadmap out here right now. No. And this goes for everybody. It's not just black people, it's white people, it's any ethnic group, it goes for anybody. Mm -hmm. so this is from a soul perspective and, and what it looks like depends on your culture or whatever, but it goes for everybody. That's why I said, you know, when we come down here, it's an individual sport. If you come down here as a man from China, Japan, Africa, whatever, it's about what, if you accomplish what you're here to accomplish, that's what matters. You know, that's what matters. And I, I know I constantly try to remind myself of that and those around me, it keeps me not taking everything so personal when I look at it that way. You know, I am here to be better. Melvin is here to be better. Mo is here to be better. And Nabina, she's here to be better. So whatever that manifests and looks like, that's what we're here to do. Thank so yes, you. we will we will continue this discussion on June 10th. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yes, yes. So for those who are watching, June 10th is, please save the date, that is the soul of a man too. Uh, it was an event that we did, I think, in, in 2018. And um, many of the guys who came said, we really needed this. And someone said, you're always doing stuff for the women. So I know, we're, we're getting to you. We're getting to you. So um, if this was just a sample of what you can hear in person on June 10th. Some of the sessions are for men only. We will be gently assuring that panel that there's some panels that are men only because men need their space. Men need to be in the man cave. They need to be amongst themselves and have discussions. So mm -hmm. we have created some spaces where, where it's just for the was just for the men. And we hope that it's very um therapeutic um, because we know that um stories heal and knowing that you're not alone is very, very in, important. And it's a good chance for, for men to gather in a in a in a safe in a, in a safe space, a very safe space. So that is Saturday, June tenth, and you'll be able to hear Mr. Terrace Strength and Mr. Melvin, who you've heard from. Yes. Um, so that promises to be a fantastic event. That's Saturday, June tenth. Just follow my Instagram, Bronx Holistic Healing, or you're following me on Facebook. You'll see that I'm posting about it. Um, thank you. Thank you. No, this thank this you. is fine. I, I'm going to send Wait. you the replay, even though it is live on social media. Uh, Miss Mo, thank you. Thank you so much for your input. I like the little bridge with the um, science. I really, I really like that. Thank you very much. For your <laughs> yeah, really, really appreciate that. So, um, yeah, we really went into overtime. So I just want to say thank you, everyone, for watching um, Transformation Thursday, which happens every Thursday. I don't know, 7, 7, 15, 7, 30. I don't know. Just, just, just tune in. I'll, I'll get on eventually. So <laughs> thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful evening. And remember, if no, one has told, no one has told you, remember that you are a spark of the divine and choice is your superpower. Absolutely. All right. All right. Bye, See everybody. You. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Thank Good you, folks. Night. Good stuff. Yep. Okay. Good night. Good night.